Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and following on from the recent launch of AMD's RX 7600 GPU, today we are taking a look at the Sapphire Pulse model. We've reviewed plenty of Pulse cards since they first hit the market back in 2017, and while they may not be quite so feature-packed as the more expensive Sapphire Nitro Plus series, I think it's safe to say you typically know what you're getting with a Pulse card, that being good build quality, an effective cooler, and usually just a small price premium over the baseline MSRP. In this case, there's actually no price premium for the Pulse, as it's currently on sale for £259.99, which is the exact figure AMD quotes as the baseline MSRP for the RX 7600. For that price, you still get a factory overclock, dual fan cooler, as well as a metal backplate. So without further ado, let's go ahead and find out exactly how it compares to AMD's reference design. off with the design of the card then this is actually the first current gen pulse card that i have reviewed but its similarities to previous gen offerings are immediately clear we still find a mostly black plastic shroud though there are a few red accents as is really a signature for the pulse family it's pretty easy on the eyes overall in my view and you can also see the pulse logo is found on each of the fan hubs build quality however is not the greatest as you can see, there's a fair bit of play with the screws that hold the shroud into the backplate, resulting in some pretty noticeable wobble if you apply any pressure to the shroud itself. Now, the good news is that this doesn't affect cooling in any way as the heatsink is separately mounted to the GPU, and that is a very secure fit. You could also argue that the quality of the plastic doesn't matter too much as once it's installed, you're not going to be touching it. But even so, it's not the best first impression for the Pulse and is a definite area for improvement. Back to the fans though, these use Sapphire's hybrid fan blade design, offering what Sapphire claims is the ideal balance between static pressure and airflow, and we can see that each fan measures 90mm in diameter. Moving on then, in terms of the overall dimensions, the Pulse comes in at 240 by 107 by 44 millimeters, so it is fairly short as modern cards go, and it's only just thicker than two PCIe slots. It is a touch longer than AMD's reference card, however, so maybe not quite as ITX friendly, but I think it should still fit in most cases. It also weighed in at 619 grams on our scales, making it 130 grams lighter than the AMD reference. As for the front side of the card then, this is home to the Sapphire and Radeon logos. These are finished in red, so that might not be a perfect fit if your system has a specific colour scheme, but the card is mostly black overall. It's also worth pointing out that there's actually no lighting of any kind on this card. As for the backplate then, this is a full length design and it is made of metal. We can see a cutout directly behind the GPU core, as well as a few smaller cutouts towards the end of the backplate to allow air to pass directly through the heatsink and out into the chassis. Power of course is still supplied by a single 8 pin connector which is exactly the same as reference. We can also note the display outputs with a single HDMI 2.1 and then three DisplayPort 1.4 connectors. It's really important to note here that these are DisplayPort 1.4 not DisplayPort 2.1 as found on AMD's reference card. This has clearly been done to save cost and to be honest I can't say I mind that much as DP 1.4 is still able to provide enough bandwidth for 1080p 360Hz, even 1080p 480Hz I believe with DSC enabled and you're unlikely to need more with this level of hardware. Moving on to the disassembly then, I mentioned earlier how the heatsink is mounted separately to the GPU and it's not integrated within the shroud. Instead, the shroud itself can actually be entirely removed while leaving the heatsink still on the PCB. And that is a great feature, I really like this. It provides easy access to the fans or fan cables without having to remove absolutely everything from the PCB. Speaking of that PCB though, Sapphire is using an 8-phase VRM for the GPU, with both OnSemi NCP302155 and NCP302045 MOSFETs being used, while the GPU VRM is controlled by an international rectifier 
IR35217. Memory VRM is two-phase, again using OnSemi NCP302045 MOSFETs, and that is controlled by OnSemi's NCP81022N controller. With the heatsink price off the PCB as well, we can see Sapphire is using a fairly compact design here with a horizontal fin stack. This is utilizing just two 6mm heat pipes, while the GPU contacts with a copper core. The memory contacts with another base plate via thermal pads, and we can also see a much thinner contact plate off to the side, which is used to cool the VRM. Finally, we can also note that Sapphire is not using any thermal pads on the underside of the back plate. That is going to do it then for our look at the card and it's now time to move on to our testing. For this we are of course using our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around Intel's i9-13900KS CPU and that's paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard and we've also got 32GB of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 memory. We're going to start off this testing section then with a look at the out of the box thermals and the performance here may actually surprise you slightly as there's really not much between the Sapphire Pulse and AMD's own reference design. The Pulse hit a peak of 72 degrees on the GPU and 90 degrees on the hotspot compared with 71 degrees and 91 degrees for the AMD reference card respectively. This is with the default out of the box fan curve however, so noise levels are not taken into account. Speaking of noise then, we can clearly see that the pulse is quieter than the reference design by 3 decibels according to my sound meter. In my testing the pulse saw the two fans run at just 21% or 1270 RPM, honestly resulting in whisper quiet acoustics. Unlike the reference card 2, I didn't notice any coil wine from the pulse and that is a definite plus although do remember this can vary from card to card i had to ramp fan speed up to 46 percent or 1260 rpm to hit 40 decibels of noise output for our noise normalized thermal testing this resulted in the pulse seeing a peak gpu temperature of 58 degrees and a hotspot of 75 degrees it is clearly then a much more efficient cooler than AMD's reference card, reducing GPU thermals by 8 degrees at the same noise levels. As for PowerDraw as well, as a reminder this is PowerDraw of the graphics card only, measured with Nvidia's PCAT tool. Now despite Sapphire claiming a 185 watt total board power or TBP figure for the Pulse, in my testing the actual PowerDraw never went this high and came in at 167 watts. That is still a small increase compared to the reference design, but only a 6 watt difference, so it's really not going to make much of a difference between the two cards, in my opinion. In terms of the operating clock speed of the Pulse, then, we measured an average frequency of 2634 MHz over our 30 minute stress test, so that makes it about 80 MHz faster than the AMD reference design, which is really not much of a difference at all, and it explains the tiny difference in the game benchmarks that we are about to see. I've deliberately truncated the frequency graph here too, just to show the difference between these two GPUs, but both the Pulse and AMD reference show very stable clock speeds at and around the 2600 MHz mark. As expected then, this very minor difference in clock speed has a clear effect on our game benchmarks. Over the 5 titles we tested, the Pulse does technically come in a touch faster than the AMD reference design as it does clock in fractionally higher, but the reality is that the differences are just so small you wouldn't notice them while gaming. That's because we're talking 1-2 to two FPS differences here, so actually we're within the margin for error, so functionally these two cards are just as fast as each other. Of course I also tried manual overclocking for the Sapphire Pulse, and honestly overclocking the 7600 is very straightforward. Both the GPU and memory frequency sliders have a hard cap and they can easily be maxed out at 3000 MHz and 2400 MHz respectively. With the power slider maxed out at plus 12%, honestly the only thing that actually needs real tweaking is the voltage slider, as the further you can undervolt the 7600, the higher it will clock, 
in the real world. In this case, I achieved stability with the pulse at 1130 millivolts compared to 1140 millivolts for the reference card. For those interested, I was actually able to pass a 3D Mark Time Spy stability test with the voltage as low as 1030 millivolts, but games were simply not stable with such a low voltage. This overclock then saw our real world frequency jump up to 2746 MHz, so that's about 110 MHz improvement over stock. In all three games I tested, this resulted in a performance improvement of 7% versus the default settings. It's hardly a game changer, but it is about what we'd expect from a modern day GPU, so we can't really complain. Power draw has also increased as a result of the overclock, now coming in at 182 watts, so that's a 15 watt increase over the stock settings. So I started this review by saying we've reviewed plenty of Pulse cards over the years, and to be honest, this review has gone almost exactly as I expected based on those previous experiences. That's because we would always expect a Pulse card to offer better thermals and acoustics when compared to an AMD reference card. Out of the box thermals for the Pulse 7600 are about the same as the reference 7600, but that's only because it runs noticeably quieter. So when we tested our noise normalized thermals, we found that the Pulse is indeed a much more efficient cooler, improving temperatures by 8 degrees. If you do have your heart set on a new RX 7600 then, it's safe to say that the Sapphire Pulse is an improvement over AMD's reference design in almost every way. I say that as the main drawback really is the build quality. As we showed earlier in the video, the way the plastic shroud actually mounts into the metal backplate is quite loose and that results in noticeable movement or wobbling of the shroud when any pressure is applied. Thankfully, Sapphire has mounted the actual GPU heatsink separate from the shroud, so it's not like the contact between the GPU die and the heatsink is effective. That's in fact rock solid. So it's literally only the plastic that moves around. But even so, I really think this is an area Sapphire can definitely improve on for the next iteration as it does not make the best first impression. As to whether or not you should actually buy a 7600, well, that is another matter entirely. I'd refer you back to my day one review where I clearly said this is not the most exciting GPU ever released. And in fact, AMD's own RDNA 2 cards like the 6600, 6600 XT, and even 6700 XT are all now on sale at very competitive prices. I personally think that the 7600 needs to be another 20 to 30 pounds cheaper for it to become the kind of go-to card in this segment, at least until we can see what the 4060 brings to the table in July. As it is though, if you do want a 7600, like I said, the Sapphire Pulse is an improvement over AMD's reference design in almost every way. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. We'd love to chat with you over on our Discord server as well, which is linked in the description. And while there, you can also find links to our new merch store and you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys. I'm Dominic 4 Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.